Welcome to Sermon Brainwave with me, Matt Skinner. And me, Caroline Lewis. And me, Rolf Jacobson. And me, Joy J. Moore. The text for Good Friday, which this year falls on April 2nd, 2021, are Isaiah 52, verse 13 through 53, verse 12, Psalm 22. There are two options for the second reading, both from the book of Hebrews, either chapter 10, verses 16 through 25, or chapter four, verses 14 through 16, and then resuming at chapter five, seven through nine. And the gospel text is from the gospel according to John, two chapters, 18 and 19. Before we get started, we should point out, this is podcast number 777 of Sermon Brainwave. Wow. We, numerologists out there are welcome to tell us what that means, but for me, it's maybe a chance to say thank you to everybody who listens and also thank you to the three of you who teach me things every week. Yeah, I can't believe we're at 777, that's amazing. So yes, I'll add my thanks and thanks to all of you. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, commentary. That's a lot of conversation around text. So, uh, and you're right, we, we always learn something uh, from each other and, thinking about these texts once again uh, as, as they come around each year, which is, of course, what John is uh, every year on, the, uh, on Good Friday is always the gospel text for Good Friday. And, you know, we, we come to this every year and we also say we recognize that people are doing a lot of different things, whether that's a tenebrae service or seven last words or, uh, but we have before us uh, the passion narrative according to John. And one of the things that we often do when we have, uh, when we come across this text and come, ac come across this day is uh, what, are we, what are we experiencing? What are we hearing differently this year? Uh, where is it that we might wanna drop down in John's uh, particularly, particular witness of, of Jesus' death? Uh, and so where, where are we? Mm -hmm. Caroline, as you asked that question, I, I recognize that um, my habit is to participate in uh, seven last words. And generally, that is how uh, I um, uh, follow the tradition of uh, Good Friday. And uh, as I looked at this text today and decided to stay with where it begins rather than where it ends, I was drawn to um, the... Um, way that this text might have been reported repeatedly and repeatedly. And that is, if you're, you're, you went out to work one day to just do your job and you got your ear cut off and then it was healed, you might talk about that for a long time. And I think that little scene right there allows us to ask, what are you hearing in the midst of this reading in the midst of the pandemic? Uh, I, I just thought that that was a great entry into how we're reading this text once again. Well, and uh, yeah, I think that's a great entry into that, uh, into the text, Joy. And then also to note that only in John is, uh, is the slave's name given a name, uh, Malchus. And so there, that creates a kind of individuality uh, for the for the listener right just to, to uh, insert your name here mm -hmm. not that I want people to feel like they're got their ear cut off not that's not where I'm going but but insert your name here uh, and that's one of the effects of of that particularity of of naming him uh, is is oh and it you know there's all kinds of resonances then with naming in the gospel of John and you could you could go that direction with the you know I know my sheep by name and and that kind of thing but uh but yeah it 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 there's a second person uh, second person singular here uh with regard to your own witness to what you what you see and what you will hear uh this this time around It reminds me of the, the whole theme of bearing witness. Uh, Malchus is a witness. He was not somebody who went into that, went to work that day, or you know, went, went, was, went to the Kidron Valley expecting this to happen. He might not have been even sympathetic to Jesus at all, but he's got a story to tell. And, and who knows if he even becomes a Christ follower afterwards or not. We simply know nothing about him, but he forever stands as a witness to this event, just as others will. Uh, in failed ways with Peter, 
uh, with uh, with the, the beloved disciple and with the mother of Jesus at the cross. So I'm not really picking one detail, one one verse or one thing, but I am thinking about the way in which this is a story that comes to us through witnesses, some who are there out of their devotion, some who are there by chance or without choice. Uh, and But none of them probably realize the full extent of what they are bearing witness to. That's a theme we'll come back to on Easter, I know, with with Mark 16, with John 20, with Acts 10. But to think about that for a little bit, what does it mean to experience something like this through the perspective of, of a witness? As opposed to the actual person, right? We don't have Jesus' own words. The uh, Isaiah's servant song doesn't give us the, the, the complaint or the lament of the servant. It gives us the perspective of, an, of a bystander or a watcher, or somebody who notices. And just to kind of help people think a bit about maybe what that means. Um, I don't think I have an answer. I don't have anything profound to close this off with, but it's it's where my mind is leading these days, probably because so many of us are bearing witness to violence in our world in new ways, in more close up ways, in intense ways, um, and, and trying to figure out how do you speak faithfully for the victims of violence, but also how do you not let an event go by and just be a watcher or an observer from a distance, but to, to recognize that, that we are engaged in the significance of this event, this event affects us. Even if again, on Good Friday, nobody knows exactly what's going on. They just know it's intense. Yeah, and there's also a, a you know, I, I spoke about the individuality with Malchus and you have those individuals who are named, as you said, Matt, with, Peter and with Mary Magdalene and and with Mary and the beloved disciple and they're all uh, the the ways in which they are they are witnessing these events. But there's also an uh, an extraordinary universality here as well uh, that the whole world is witnessing this uh, that you get in the arrest with. Judas bringing a detachment of soldiers, that's a Roman term for, these are Roman soldiers. And then uh, together with police from the chief priests and Pharisees. So you have the, you know, the Roman uh, contingent, you have the Jewish contingent, uh, and then you have the, the translation over Jesus' uh, head uh, in Latin, Greek, and Hebrew of King of the Jews. And so we're reminded here in the Passion Narrative, which is so a critical theme in John, that this is, this is, this is directed to the entire world. How will the world respond uh, to, to what they witness? And so, um, and so that's, a, that's a piece of it too, is recognizing that this is that, that we stand in an individual sense, but that there's this, this the, the wider, uh, implications are meant for, uh, and, and are meant for the cosmos, uh, and that kind of, I don't know, that kind of puts your own sort of sense of witness in a different perspective as well. This is not just about me. This is what are other, what are other people seeing, and what are other people witnessing, and uh, how will they respond? I appreciate that, Caroline. I um, I noticed the uh, that as well, and was struck. Um, in the terms of how everyone is named, you know, the, the three different ways of talking about who all gathered, uh, uh, you know, the Jewish contingent, the Roman contingent, the disciples uh, were there. Uh, and um, sometimes, and I've said this a few weeks ago, sometimes I've read uh, portions of scripture and thought that this idea that everybody knew about this was uh, uh, more hyperbole than, you know, everybody really knew about this. But it's kind of for that community and the testimony that was a result of that, you know, people continuing to tell this story uh, after um, getting ahead of ourselves after the rumors of the resurrection. Um, but it's the same kind of thing of a viral video today. And whether you uh, were encountered it in the present or whether or not you encountered the aftermath of the tragedy, it affects your life. Uh, Matt, you were getting at that. And what does that encounter, knowing that this event happened and made such an impact on these individuals that they would tell this story over and over again in such a compelling way that you would hear it and be drawn in, being drawn into the story, how do you tell that story? And that's how we become, um, in our contemporary moment, the witnesses to something that happened 2,000 years ago 
and the effect of it for all the world. I think that's what you point out that John 3.16 was all about. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think maybe uh, related to witness, and if we're going a kind of a thematic way with, with, with Good Friday this year, uh, one of the one of the main uh, well embodiments, if you will, of 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 discipleship in the Gospel of John is witness. That uh, that that you know, in terms of of what are the characteristics of a of a disciple or a follower of Jesus, it is to give witness to what you have seen and what you have experienced, and uh, but that, and also recognizing the the risk and the fear in that uh, we had our first you know the that first witness of the woman at the well uh, who says come and see uh, and then we're going to have the witness of Mary I have seen the Lord uh, but but striking in in comparison is Peter uh, that that Peter's denial here. Uh, in the passion narrative of John is not a denial, uh, and I've talked about this before, not a denial of knowing Jesus as it is in the synoptics. Do you know him? I don't know him. Don't you know the man? I don't know him. Uh, but here it's a denial of his discipleship. Uh, they, uh, the question is, uh, aren't you one of his disciples? And you have that, that, I, uh, that irony, ironic illusion of I am not. Sure, you're one of his disciples, aren't you? I am not. And didn't I see you in the garden with him? No. And so here is Peter actually denying um, that activity of, of, what, of what he's being called to do. And I, I think there's something really poignant in that, that we, we, we are called to, we are called to give witness to this, but, but how is it that Peter's denial of that uh, of that identity reminds us of of the difficulty of that uh, this is not easy to give witness do we really want to what is it that we don't want to see uh, that we choose not to see and so I think if, if if we're if we go with that theme then Peter offers a really critical piece in that uh, to name to name the challenges of what it means to be a witness I, I like that and it makes me think to go all the way back uh, or go all the way forward uh, to Joseph of Arimathea and his witness, you know, it, it says who was a disciple of Jesus. His witness was not what he said, but it was his, what he did. It, 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 it is uh, that he allowed them to take, uh, to give a place uh, for Jesus' body to be, to be buried. And sometimes um, when we talk about witness, and we, we always think that that means I have to say that I am a disciple. I am, I am, uh, um, yes to Jesus. Uh, uh, do you know him? Yes, I know Jesus. Are you saved? Yes. Are you born again? Yes. Um, uh, come with me to church. You know, if we translate um, the, um, the woman at the well, come and see for yourself. Uh, but in this one, there isn't a testimony. The testimony is about uh, Joseph of Arimathea, but his witness is what he did, which was uh, in caring for the, the body of Jesus uh, and also caring for what was not being tended to by the disciples that scattered. And so sometimes our witness is to do the right thing in the name of Jesus, so that at the end, Jesus is recognized. And, and it's not about me. Yes, I am the disciple, but it's about what do I do that lifts up Jesus again and again. And to note too, is one more thing with that, Joseph also goes to Pilate and asks for the body, which is, uh, he, he might have some access already to Pilate if he's a Jewish elite in Jerusalem, but it's still risky. I want to tend for the body of this criminal. Uh, mm -hmm. He deserves some dignity in death. Mm -hmm. I'm um, I'm struck uh, by a bunch of things this year. For, uh, first of all, just following up on uh, what you guys have said. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks to you guys for all the uh, the 
the best continued education I get um, weekly uh, when we get together. Uh, thanks to our authors um, over the years for the commentaries. Um, uh, and also, Philippe and Caroline, I mean, one of the things that's most poignant to me in, in John's narrative of the trial is that P Jesus is in front of all the people in power, clearly confessing his identity. And then it goes back and forth out to the scene where Peter's in front of the people with no power. You know, um, so it goes out of the way to say, you know, oh, it's a slave, you know, so who can't offer any testimony in trial. Um, but, uh, you know, oh, it's a cousin of the Malchus, you, you know, dude. Uh, and uh, so by going back and forth between those two scenes, highlights Jesus in front of the people of power, clearly confessing his identity, and then Peter denying it, denying his identity and his relationship with Jesus. And then fast forwarding through, uh, you know, these long chapters, uh, of course, the, the what is truth, um, always stands out but it's this time this year it just seems uh, uh with truth so contested and just pe people feeling free simply to deny truth in so many ways in our society um uh on all sides i believe not just one side yes if you're one who believes that it's only one side uh who's denying truth then uh i deny that truth i deny your truth as they say uh but then the it is finished really of the of the words on the cross um well two of two of the three words really strike me this year uh, first is it is finished uh how that can be such good news uh in, in sometimes you know um and boy just when we are when we're finally going to get that it is finished whether you're vaccinated it's finished you're the pandemic is finished. It's, you know, our quarantine, all that stuff. That's going to be such good news. Um, and of course it's bad news, you know, uh, so uh, oftentimes, you know, um, whether it's the death of someone, a loved one or the end of a relationship, the end of something. Uh, it, and so it's got, obviously it, it's got both those aspects when Jesus says it, it's his, it's his death, but it's when he had drank, right? Um, and earlier he says, you know, uh, to the Malchus incident, you know, am I not, I don't have to drink the cup the father set aside for me. And the cup that he drinks then is the sponge. It's not, uh, you know, and then it is finished. So, I mean, those are the things that stand out to me this year. Well, and two, thanks for that, Rolf. And, and two, with the, with, of course, that's a distinctive word from the cross and John of it is finished or it has been completed or everything has been brought to its intended goal. And it's uh, in perfect tense. And so there's one of the things that I was thinking about when you were mentioning that is that it, it there is a, there's residual in, in what has, what we've witnessed. And I've, I've been working a lot, um, I'm on sabbatical and, uh, in the book I'm working on, I've been doing a lot of work with trauma and, and how trauma becomes a lens through which to read scripture. And that, that, that moment of that perfect tense is like, what remains? <laughs> What's the residual? And uh, that, uh, that, that there is no, there's no, there is no going back to life before the storm. Uh, and and so, and I'm going to talk about that more when we talk about the resurrection text, but that's part of the witness that life is fundamentally different, that there, uh, there, there, ha there is a, there is a, a need for a, a total reintegration of how do you understand, not understand, or how, what are you going to do with this death that is now a part of your life? Uh, and a part of your life going forward, that, that part of witnessing is giving witness to death, um, a death on a cross. And, uh, and that's, that's, real, that's all that's held in that it is finished. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up. Thanks.